Stella came from Czechoslovakia, uh, when she was seven years old. She didn't speak any English, but she learned it in the first few months she was here. And started working when she was 14. Um, the bus would stop right here on the corner, and I'd sit here and wait, and I'd see her come off that bus, and it, it, she was always so cute. During that time, she raised four children. She was uh, not only a full-time housewife, but she also was a full-time uh, career woman. She always had her little dress, and she always had the hat, and the, and the purse, and the shoes would all match. She cooked, sewed, cleaned, and she made all her own clothes. I looked at her like she was an icon. Uh, after my dad died, my, my mom was always very independent, and she stayed active, and she was a very strong woman. What was astounding about her, she kept active. And she, she would go swimming three times a week. She was the first one, I'm sure, in the whole neighborhood that had filtered water because she read that's an important part of health. Went to luncheons and went to bingo. She just did it all. So she was uh, 88, 90 years old when her friend started to die. Good morning, Mom. How are you? Hi. Good morning, it's a beautiful day. Are you trying to Yeah, good morning. Well, good morning. Would you like some good coffee? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll get up and have a good time today, okay? All right. Okay. With vascular dementia, um, there are there is definite damage to the brain as these small strokes occur as opposed to um, Alzheimer's disease where there is simply a, an atrophy uh, of, the, of the cerebral tissue as opposed to actual damage from uh, small strokes. Sometimes she's very clear. She'll know who we are. One day, one day she knew both of us at the same time and knew both Elaine and I were her daughters. Uh, so it isn't like it's, her whole memory is gone. She goes back a lot to her childhood. She oh, asked for her mother a lot and her sister Mary. And then she'll come back to the present. It just kind of goes back and forth and we just deal with her wherever she's at, at that time. What's my name, Grandma? I, I knew it in the bed for, for a good. And those things, they, 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 they didn't. You, 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 you learn them and then you forget them. So, what do you do about that? Well, I usually get up around 5.30 in the morning because I'm also taking care of another household, so I get my stuff done there, and then I come here and uh, get a few things done before mom gets up. I usually get the clothes washed, um, straighten up the house. You have to make sure everything's stocked uh, for her medical needs as well. Upkeep on the house, and I usually supply food for the people to make sure everyone here. wrote down their hours. We try to make it as prior comfortable day. as possible um, for everyone involved in this because we figured it that way. Mom, I'm gonna get you cleaned up now, okay? All right. Okay. Just one minute, okay? Just a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit, and then we're gonna get you something good to drink, okay? Your hands have so much arthritis, don't they? I don't know. Yeah. Gotta be careful with you, huh? Yeah, you do. You do, I know it. Unfortunately, many responses to uh, taking care of mom get down to one final bitter problem and that's incontinence. While it's difficult to change your grandson's diapers, it's even more difficult to change your mother's diapers. So that is probably the thing that trips the balance from being able to survive at home with visiting nurse services and uh, supplemental help and family extenders and so on. Well, it was just never a big deal for me because I helped mom with my dad when he got so sick and we changed his pants and then when you have kids it doesn't, it isn't a shock to you. 
any part of the body isn't a shock to you and you just did what needed to be done. It isn't something that really bothers you when it's your mother. I guess I'm kind of the unofficial house cleaner. I bring my little seven-year-old most of the time, my seven-year-old boy, Luke, and we'll talk to Grandma for a few Table minutes and, and we'll ask her if we can spend the night. And oh, she's always real happy to have us. And um, then we'll have some dinner. Hold that. What is that? A spoon. Oh yeah, what's a spoon? We'll hold it. Okay? Huh? Hold that. Why? Use it to eat your cereal, honey. Who's? Yeah, there you go. Put a bite in your mouth. Try it. See if you like it. There you go. You like it? Got it, girl. Good job. That's not bad, is it? Well, it's not the bad, baddest, baddest. It's not the best. <laughs> and we'll watch a little TV and um, do a little talking and maybe some singing. She still is very um, vivid with the Bohemian songs. It's amazing. Uh, we try to keep a really cheery house, lots of pictures of family members, uh, flowers, a lot of signs that she can read, uh, pictures of her husband and their wedding pictures. And we always put her name up there, and that still keeps her sharp as far as reading. You know what your name is? Hmm? You remember? Can you see that up there on the wall? See what it yeah. says up there on the wall? Yeah. What does that say? Let's see. G E. Okay, what does that word say? Step, You know what this says. What does it say? Stella. <laughs> we do this to keep her mind stimulated because we figure the more we stimulate her, the better off she will be, and we will too. She does have a quality of life that yes. I don't think one would have if you're sitting in a care home by yourself in a room. Now, I can't even fathom my grandmother being alone uh, with right. unconcerned strangers for 160 out of 168 hours a week and still maintaining her will to live. And for someone to say that they don't come to visit their loved one because they say, well, she doesn't know me anyways. One begins to realize the point isn't, does she know who it is that is the significant person that is caring for her. Uh, somebody isn't going to be standing outside the door every time you leave saying, hey, good job, you're wonderful, you're great. What's important to us is that we're caring for her and that she's experiencing um, life. Life. Is that about the younger person visiting the elder or about the elder being happy to see that younger person even though they can't call that person by name? You know, to demand that she knows who we are or that she has to know what's happening all the time is, is almost a little selfish. Certainly in our case, we have not uh, had the luxuries of, of long vacations and a lot of our own free time. Just being and okay with that. Being okay with knowing that you're not going on a cruise next year. You're not gonna take two weeks and go to Disney World. Sometimes it goes really smooth, other times it's rougher, but we always get through it. Whenever I start to think anything other than positive things, I always think to myself, if it was over tomorrow, would it all be so bad? And every single time I say no. And not everyone in the family feels that way, but in our situation we have a a lot of family members that are very committed to the situation, making it doable. No matter how hard it ever gets, it's always doable. I promised her years ago that I would never put her in a home. <laughs> and I'm going to hold that promise. How could we not keep that commitment to her, as committed as she was to us all our life? <laughs> Cut. <laughs>